Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Stream of Chaos. My name is James, and I will be your Keeper of Arcane Lore for today's game of Call of Cthulhu 7th Edition. Today, I am joined by these fine cast members of the Stream of Chaos, where we will be playing through um, the beginning of a live play of Cults of Cthulhu. Cult of Cthulhu is a fantastic source book. It contains a whole bunch of information about... Cthulhu and about the various strange sects that worship Cthulhu. It contains a bunch of really interesting information on how to put together your own custom cult. And of course, it contains a collection of scenarios, specifically three scenarios, which are set across different periods of time throughout history. Since Cult of Cthulhu is broken up in that way, we are just going to be playing the first of the scenarios uh, today and over the next couple of weeks, and we will come back to play the others at another point. So without further ado, let's introduce the characters and the players that will be joining us today. Uh, do you want to start off? Do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your character? What? Hello. What? Um, hi, I'm Mart, and I will be playing uh, Lord Ashley Burbage. Well, Ashley Burbage, Lord of Bothwell. This is the action that we're going for. I apologize. It may wander. Who cares? Uh, Bothwell is a patron of the arts. He loves the arts. Um, he's affable, not very bright, uh, and just generally sort of wanders around the world with, you know, making, making everything easy because he has all the money. Just his entire personality is all the money. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> it's a detailed and nuanced personality trait. You are, you are very, very rich, and that's what's important. Uh, I'm friendly, and I have money. What's yeah. more? What more do you want? <laughs> all right. Hello. Absolutely. Uh, next, let's jump across to Dave. Do you want to introduce us? All right. G'day. I am Dave, and I am playing Colin Fenton. He is a local English actor. I like to think of the blue collar actor. Uh, he does the sort of background roles, very sort of mundane shit, does a lot of mask work. Uh, and where Ashley is wealthy, Colin is dreadfully, dreadfully poor. Uh, he's a young guy who doesn't get too much work and what little he does get uh, is not paid particularly well. So he sleeps in sort of boarding houses and things. And uh, very recently, actually, just today, when our scenario begins, uh, he has been relieved of his rooms. And whenever we first find him, he's carting a little trunk along with all his worldly possessions in it, uh, hoping he can find somewhere to sleep tonight. <laughs> very important. You've got both the highs and the lows. Uh, okay, last but not least then, let's jump across to Jackson. Hey, that's me. I'm Jackson and I'm playing Professor Lucas Mooresville, uh, Professor of History Extraordinaire uh, and Beards. He is, uh, he is bearded. <laughs> not oh, an actual I professor I could, of beards. I thought be... I could make this up on the fly. Who and now I'm already struggling. Chaz's introductions were the high point. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm Jackson. Lucas I'm playing Lucas Smallsville. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I love uh, it. Yes, professor of history and occultism extraordinaire and bearded. Okay. Well, that's our cast. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, setting in the time period before we jump in. So as I mentioned, all of the Cult of Cthulhu scenarios are set at different times. And this first one is set in London in 1896. It is autumn and we will be tearing around jolly old England, or more specifically, jolly old uh, London, uh, getting up to all kinds of adventures. Ah, did you want to add something? Yeah, just a horrifying fun fact that 1896 to like the 1920s when we usually play is the same time difference as 1990 to today. So you're welcome. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, that is a that is a pretty big time jump, isn't it? There you what go. Time. All right. Well, just before we completely dive in, then just to get a little bit more of the setting come through, I want to ask you a, a question or two, some really easy things to answer about your characters, just to give us a little bit more of a sense of them. So, uh, 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 starting off, you know, your 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 character is very into uh, the world of art and you know artistic endeavor. What what's the most interesting play or piece of music or uh, artwork that you recently funded? I recently funded. Mm. Um, top of head, 
Uh, I think that it was uh, the one that I'm most proud of, most recently proud of, was a, uh, a stage production of King Lear, which had an amazing young actor in it, who unfortunately disappeared across the Atlantic, bless his soul. Uh, but hopefully we will see him again sometime to... I don't... In- name! V something or other. I'm entirely <laughs> sure I remember. I should, this lead actor. Anyway, very good production. Very, very... Uh, Heavy on the soul, which is what you want with theatre, something that really captures the essence of humanity, if you know what I mean. Mm, Of course. I think you're going to get along just fine with some of the people in this scenario. Uh, Jumping across, uh, Dave, your your character is involved in theatre. Can you give us a a, a review or a description of the most recent play you were in? Yeah, certainly. Uh, So I was in a recent piece, which was a sort of a, a Christmas tale esque thing uh, a lot of a messages pantomime? about ghosts and things yeah panto uh, actually no i think this this was this was a dramatic role um in which i played a number of background characters changing masks throughout the 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 scenes um to come in as you know the the poor chimney sweep then to return later as the elderly curmudgeon um uh, all supporting the the main like two or three actors that had the the principal roles I love it. Very good. Very interesting. Thank you. And uh, let, let's jump across uh, Jackson. You know, your, your, your character is a historian. So just, just some a light question. Um, on the 15th of September, 1896, Pope Leo III issued the papal, papal bull, um, Astropolicae True. Curae. Uh, and I just wanted you to talk a little bit about the complex relationship that the Anglican Church had with uh, the papal you know, authority uh, throughout history, but focused particularly on the 19th century. Well, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I could go on. Yeah, I, I but, don't think you uh, need to. I think that was about perfect and very, very correct. Uh, oh, and, and, and with enough with enough humour, then let's uh, jump in to Loki's gift and begin our scenario uh, on a rainy, blustery day uh, of autumn in London. So... Uh, the collection of you are uh, citizens of this grand city, and you are also, in some capacity, investigators of the mythos. You're known to each other, and you have, in your previous adventures, had at least some experience with the strange and bizarre things out there. As such, you've developed a little bit of a reputation as a collection of people who get called on when there's something a little bit odd that needs investigation. It's not always something magical, but, you know, when something that either isn't appropriate for the police or for reasons of reputation and uh, good standing in society can't be raised to the police. The collection of you have recently being called to the home of Lord Richard Gladstone. Uh, He has a house in Kensington. And considering that you have all been called, you immediately begin to suspect that there is some kind of quite serious conversation that is going to be uh, coming up, possibly to do with a, a job Uh, for the collection of you. For some of you who might do this work because you desperately need money, that's going to be very, very important. For some Mm -hmm. of you who kind of, yeah, yeah, it sounds pretty critical. Uh, For some of you, you might be doing this uh, out of a favour or friendship. Um, Some of you know uh, Lord Gladstone. Um, Lord Bothwell in particular, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about your relationship with uh, Lord Gladstone? Yes, well, a good fellow. Um, Somewhat stuffy. But, uh, you know, a a good, good man, good man. Uh, I was rather fond of his son, Charles, uh, who was uh, a a phenomenal musician. Uh, I knew him since he was a lad. Wonderful, wonderful ear for music. Uh, Unfortunately, he died recently, though, so I I assume that's why Richard has has asked us or asked me to to attend his house. Uh, It was, uh, well, rather close with them both, so. I'm very sad to hear of his passing. I have um, one of the one of the old tuning forks. He gifted me one of his uh, his tuning forks uh, from one of his his very early performances. It's got a dent in it, unfortunately, which is why I can't use it anymore. But you know, to old uh, old Uncle Ashley, he was call me. Uh, yes, yeah. and unfortunately, you are exactly right. Charles Gladstone, the son of Richard Gladstone, 
passed away about five days ago. Um, now, uh, Colin, uh, you knew uh, Charles as well, but you probably only learn that he has passed away recently. Uh, when, the when I show up and everyone else is wearing black. <laughs> uh, yeah, ex uh, exa exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, but when, when you arrive and you, you will come to the house, which is just to the western side of Hyde Park in London, you'll be gathered together and invited in and uh, you spend some time in a sitting room where you're all able to reacquaint yourselves with each other, catch up to date. You start to realise that this is probably about a job before you will eventually be called through in to meet with uh, Lord Gladstone himself. But before we do that, can I get everybody to give a physical description description of their character so they can get an image of them in our heads anybody can jump in to start i'll go so um i am uh, a, a small like a short and quite uh, thin uh, young guy um with messy brown hair kept under one of those sort of newsboy caps um when he comes into the room he's dressed in cheap warm clothing a lot of layers uh and he sits down on a steamer trunk that he's dragged in behind him as well and, and seated off towards the corner if there's any sort of canapes or nibbles on option uh he will help himself liberally to them <laughs> uh and also make sure to do as much schmoozing as he thinks he can get away with talking about seeing if he can source any work or any upcoming roles or just uh reconnect with a friend long enough to possibly crash on a couch for a couple days okay perfect so to be entirely clear this isn't a this isn't a funeral affair this is just the the three of you who have been called in and you might so be no nibbles then uh, no, they'll bring out some nibbles, some of the some of the um, uh, serving the, some of the, the serving stuff. Out of politeness, we'll have to do it. Then we'll be powering in there. Um, you know, uh, you, you'll be powering through it. But in terms of schmoozing, you'll be trying to connect with these two, who uh, may or may not be responsive to allowing you a uh, place to crash. We'll see based on them. Uh, who wants to jump in next? I will. Uh, Lucas Mooresville is uh, approaching middle age, um, but uh, his beard had a head start. It's uh, kind of trailing down toward his, toward his chest. Um, and in a few short years, he's going to be that kind of mad hermit stereotype because he's clearly not taking good care of himself, his clothes in particular. Um, you can't tell by looking at him that he's got that he's, he's he has some means because he doesn't put any effort. He's, he he goes unkempt and uh, puts on the same clothes he had on yesterday because that's efficient. You know, you spend too much time grooming, then uh, then you don't get as much work done. Um, so he is uh, he, he's stumbling around in his, in his shabby clothes, uh, perusing the uh, the oddments and the and the. Uh, and the, and the and the books and the and the knickknacks and the what have yous and the thing thing with what sits all technical that, terms uh, you'll find. the the accoutrements of the of the of the of the room without making a lot of eye contact with anyone else that was an impressive list of uh, synonyms and i applaud you sir oh i could go on <laughs> please don't um, okay <laughs> going across we now have last but not least uh lord bothwell uh, so Lord Bothwell uh, should be last because he enters last, uh, walks into the room and uh, he is dressed, honestly, just think Lord Grantham from Downton Abbey, except slightly larger in stature, big sort of mutton chop uh, into moustache beard um, <clears throat> and uh, is dressed in slightly darker tones, not black, but definitely sort of like dark browns and greens, um, as is appropriate for landed gentry, but also uh, to sort of mimic the mood of the occasion somewhat. Uh, everything he wears is of extremely good quality, um, you know, Vimes's boot theory. He can afford very good clothing and it lasts a long time and this mm -hmm. stuff looks well tailored but and like like comfortably worn. Uh, it is not new, but it is good enough quality that it doesn't really matter how many times he wears it. It's going to last a long time. Um, he has, he does have a monocle. I think that <laughs> needs to happen, uh, cool. which he keeps like uh, tucked into pocket and he's got his little like waistcoat chain and, uh, and pocket watch. Um, <clears throat> uh, but he will, he will walk in and very loudly say, Fenton, professor, what a lovely surprise. <laughs> 
I'm sure you're able to pull up the tone of the room quite considerably. I think the 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 the, the serving staff uh, that you see are a little bit solemn. There's two of them, the man and a woman who are bustling about. Um, but after the collection of you can reconvene and briefly have a conversation, catch back up, and after Colin can try and slide in a few, um, so where are you staying kind of uh, uh, ideas, uh, looking for work and the rest of it. Um, the three of you will head forward and come in to meet uh, with Lord Gladstone himself. You're led through the house into a very, very nice office. You immediately get the sense that this is a man who lives with the work at the forefront of his mind. There's not a lot of ostentatious display, just enough to make everything nice and tasteful. The window is uh, at the, a large window looks over uh, London at the back and you can see Gladstone is standing in front of it. He's an older man who, you know, it started to put on a bit of uh, weight with age, but he's now kind of a little bit shrunken. He just seems quite defeated. Um, he's nursing uh, a glass of scotch although he hardly seems to be touching it. Um, and after greeting the collection of you, uh, Lord Bothwell in particular, out of politeness for your station, he will um, sit down uh, in, at his desk and uh, begin to converse with the collection of you. He'll first explain, you know, I'm glad you're here, and he'll make pleasantries, but he pretty quickly moves across to the reason he called you in. And I know that the collection of you have some, well, talents in uh, learning or, or understanding things that are not immediately obvious. And, and that's what I'm hoping you might be able to assist me with, you know, understanding here. And, and I'm not sure what the formalities are for this sort of arrangement, but I'm, I'm very happy to pay. I, I, I'm seeking to understand, you see. Can you help me with that? Of course, Richard, of course. Anything for old friend. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. To be it. clear, um, I don't think you want to seek understanding until it's come through us. Understanding of the shadows that lurk in the corners of our world is not to be taken lightly. Yeah, no, yes, that's, Professor. that's enough, though, Professor. We're happy to work, and if you've got something that needs looking into, we, we probably can help you. Um, we've done some similar things in the past. Um, uh, just any information. But it's not you can always give us. gone well for all involved. Yes, but we're, still, good. we're mm. still here, though, so it's it's gone well enough. Um, all but things now. considered. But Professor, now. can we get you a drink? I, I'm still served. Quite thank you, but but. Um, oh, the professor. Sorry, I misheard. Uh, he'll push, push his drink across to you. <laughs> Soda <of> water. <laughs> uh, the serving staff will uh, arrange something. No ice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know, despite uh, the professor's hesitations, um, uh, the two of you seem relatively keen, and uh, uh, Lord Gladstone will uh, continue on. He'll start to explain exactly what's going on. Of course, the matter I want to look into r relates to Charles's passing. I, I don't know what you might have heard about or, or read in the papers, but I'm afraid to say that uh, although it was reported that Charles fell to his death, uh, I'm quite afraid that he jumped. He, uh, something had, was disturbing the poor boy and I, I just want to understand why. What I could have done if I don't, but to put an old man's mind at ease. And and I to, to be does does a hundred pounds each sound reasonable? Which of course is a lot of money. Uh, you know, bouncing back this that that's a, a very significant healthy sum for everybody about Lord Bothwell, who you know spend that on a Wednesday. And then on a Wednesday morning. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> I suppose we just need to know a, a bit more about what it is that you actually want us to look into. He he, he was t saying things, he was seeing things. What what makes you suspect that there was more um, at play here? Well, he was, yes, I, of course. I, I want to know why he took his life. That's what I want to know. And I, I will admit that I hadn't seen him as much as I should have recently but then again i hadn't seen him as much as i should have for decades even as long as he was born i, I work a lot and i i don't 
if this tragedy has taught me that I really should be spending more time with my children. And he kind of leans back in his chair. I, I he'd been carousing somewhat recently. I, I believe he'd he he'd, he'd fallen in with a, the artistic scene of uh, of London, which I, I think is you know perfectly understandable. It's a very uh, fun diversion. I think in particular he was he was seeing a, a woman who was ten years his senior. Uh, rather unusual, uh, an actress, unless I'm mistaken, a, a, a Miss Cornwall, uh, I, I believe. But that's really the, the vaguest information that I know. But I, I hadn't seen him in quite some time. I, with a few times I did, he seemed a little perturbed, but I never broached the topic with him uh, quite deeply. And now, well, I miss the music he'd play throughout the house. And I just want to understand why and what happened. Of course, I, I do not. Uh, I appreciate the offer, Richard, but uh, we're old friends. I do this out of friendship, of course. And some of us are, are good acquaintances, and we'll, we'll do it for pay. Of course, of course, please, uh, uh, thank, uh, Lord Lord Bothwell. If you, you're welcome to just to uh, uh, forego your your share, I can provide the, the uh, difference to your companions. Yes, of course. Uh, alternatively. Make a donation to the music school oh. in, uh, <laughs> uh, you uh, in, in the name of your son. It's, it's a very good idea. Yes, I, I think I might do just that. I suppose please I, uh, do, uh, please just, do. <laughs> um, this payment, is this something you'd like to give us up front or are there terms that must be reached first? I don't know. So he, so for, for what it's worth, um, he seems very open uh, and, and he pretty happy to kind of go with whatever. If you start saying, you know, usually you'd pay up front, he'll start to sort of, you know, get things together. It's a large enough amount of money that, um, you know, it would take him a little bit of time to put it all together and get it across to you. But he can give you an advance, certainly. If you just, just a few, yeah, just just something to get us started. Um, uh, expenses and all, that'd be good. Of course. Um, uh, once I've got a couple cold, hard bills in hand, and this feels a little less theoretical, um, I will ask him, why not just go to the police? Uh, we have some experience in strange areas, sure, but none of this sounds, no offence, particularly strange. It just seems as though your son's fallen in with the artist scene. Sure, absolutely. So he, first of all, he does, he hands you each um, uh, five pounds. Uh, to 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 spend as you see fit, and I can I can almost imagine Colin's eyes boggling as the uh, as the cash gets um, put How forward. Um, uh, but um, he'll pretty quickly uh, nod at your you know question. Say, well, quite simply, um, I, I don't want to drag his memory and my what remains of my family's memory uh, yeah. through the mud. I, I have other children, you know, uh, uh, who who uh, it could damage their relationships with their uh, others, and I, I want this matter to be dealt with uh, quietly, if possible. Quite apart from that, there's the fact that, as many you know, youngsters do, I am reasonably sure that Charles had dabbled in things that the uh, law might not look too kindly upon, and perhaps it would be best if those things remained quiet and hidden. I, I didn't have any deep knowledge of things, but my uh, my daughter, uh, my daughter Catherine mentioned that he had been spending some time in uh, uh, in smoking dens and the like. Discretion's the name then? Yes, very much so. Yes, the police are jolly good chaps, but when it comes to, you know, family business and friend business, we'd like to keep things hush-hush, if you know what I mean. I'm glad that you understand. Of course, Richard, of course. Well, beyond, uh, beyond what I've already told you, and he kind of uh, sits back for a second and thinks, uh, he was, so he was speaking with artists, Cornwall in particular. I know that he'd been spending some time at a, at a gentleman's club called the Pacific Club, uh, which is rather unusual. We're, 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 my, my, our, our family are members of a variety of clubs, so I find it strange that he'd go off to find his own. Um, he was close with my daughter, Catherine. She, if you'd like, I can introduce you to her and she might be able to tell you some more. And, and of course, you're welcome to, uh, to search his room which I've left untouched, and uh, 
That would be a good place to start. Any, anything, any other ways that I can help, please, you need only ask. I'd like to see the lad's room. Very good, very good. He'll stand and um, <clears throat> does that, do either of the other of you have any other questions for him? Otherwise he'll take you upstairs. Uh, <clears throat> no, but I, I may, I may forego searching the room in favor of uh, speaking to Catherine because I would know her at least a little, I assume. Absolutely. Yep. <coughs> Um, what about you, Colin? You got a preference? You want to go to the room or you'd like to speak to um, Catherine? Or you can room, also please. speak to you. Room? Okay, perfect. All right. So, first of all, uh, 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 Lord Gladson will take everybody out. He'll lead you up a flight of stairs um, and he'll point you towards the room and say you're welcome to uh, take a look inside. And then he will accompany you down, um, Lord Bothwell, uh, where he will stand in the room uh, while you speak to Catherine. Um, we'll jump into that scene properly. But first of all, let's, uh, with these two, uh, explore the room just a little bit. You walk up uh, this hallway and turn right into. You know, it's not a, it's not a single room. It's actually more like a parlor with sort of like a detached bedroom and even like a detached study area. There's a rather expensive house, um, but these are the rooms of uh, young Charles, and you can uh, peruse them at your leisure. It's well maintained. It's pretty sparsely decorated. Of particular uh, note. The only thing that seems out of the ordinary is that his his workstation, which uh, which is a desk, and you can see a piano next to it. Um, they seem very very often used, and there's like scraps of uh, notes and music about, and all kinds of equipment and scrawled notes. It seems like uh, Charles has been working quite hard recently. What would the two of you like to do inside the room? I will pour over those notes. Fantastic. With all haste. Right. Great. You can, uh, if you would like for me, why don't you make a library use check here? Literally just sort of going through everything, trying to organize it, get a sense of uh, what is here. Yeah. Swang. First roll of the campaign. That's how we do it. Very good. What's up? Okay. Um, what about yourself, Colin, before we go back and get the result of this? Uh, so I walk around the room. I've gotten the five pound note and I'm doing that, like I'm snapping it as I walk around and clicking my tongue. Uh, as a... I've stayed in a couple of boarding houses and things. I know you have to protect your shit. Um, and I imagine it's not so different from uh, nosy fathers or, you know, cleaning staff that are going to come through and have a root around. So I'll suddenly drop down to the ground and scoot under the bed in one quick motion. And I'm going to look around and see if he's got any, like, hidden... Like, I'm thinking drugs, honestly, at the moment. And he just got, found a bad habit. Um, so I'm going to try and look for any, like, hidden caches or anything like that. Sure, yeah. Make a spot hidden check. Rock and roll. Schwang. Okay. Fantastic. Not quite Come so impressive, on. but <laughs> that's a good start. Um, uh, yeah, really, really, uh, really good start to everything. Okay, the two of you are like a, a well oiled machine, dive in, you start to go through everything. First of all, uh, we're going to jump uh, to uh, the professor, um, as you start to go through everything, professor, you notice that several of these pieces of, of, of music that are scraps and they sort of look like they've been written over um, a variety of time. You, you start to go through them and organize them and put them into piles. You realize that they appear to be a, a single piece and and it's reworked versions of the same piece. Charles was composing something. Mm -hmm. Um, and before long, moving bits around, you know, going by, you, you, you managed to put together a pretty definitive copy of what you think uh, the, the closest that Charles got to finishing this composition would have been. And soon it's, it's held in your hands. Everything else appears to be um, <laughs> a little bit kind of messy. Now, with your hard success, I, I'll, I'll go and say this, this, it does appear to be a little, a little frantic, you know, and you can see that the quality of the organization and the note taking uh that is present you know there's under all of the scattered papers you do find some piles and uh, at the, the first you know notes and 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 um you know sheets of music that were written were very very well maintained and by the end they're just kind of frantically scrawled and there's big aggressive crosses through them and things like that interestant is there a piano in here there is a piano just towards the side, a very well used, um, uh, but expensive and large uh, piano. Do you um, dabble, Professor? Uh, not according to my character sheet, but I imagine if you've gone through university, you 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 learn to tickle the you ivories at some stage. Absolutely. Okay. No, why? I don't dabble. 
And I'll go over and start picking at the keys. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so you can make, you, you're, you're exactly right. This is the kind of thing that you might have picked up in the course of your studies uh, and your work, which is why it will ask for an education role at this point. Oh, so very make good. Make an EDU check. But meanwhile. Uh, as he's, as he's down there as well, while he's looking through them, I'll just ask, is, is there a patron or anything listed with it, Professor? Has he been paid for the piece? Uh... Is he GM? No, you saw no such information. Seems he was uh, working on, it, on it, his own project. Yeah. Uh, or, or, or there was no information listed. More yeah. to the point, this this was just the music. Like if there was that kind of info, um, it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been put out. Okay. Can't lose. Hot streak. Let's go. <laughs> Seventeen successes. Do and go and have a go at playing this um as we dart across quickly to colored um you check all of the like skilled spots that you think you would hide something in and one by one you you gradually turn them up empty and you're you're kind of like oh clearly there's nothing hidden there at first but then it occurs to you if you were living in a place like this maybe you wouldn't know what the good places to hide something are so acting on kind of like instinct you head towards one of the desk drawers and pull it out and like check at the very very back it's just and under then, the pillow <laughs> yeah you leak, oh, under the yeah. pillow is even better you find like tucked you know behind the mattress just it, something that where very clearly uh, all the staff who like remade it would have been would've... taken instantly yeah exactly or they would have been, been in a boarding several house times and just left um but you will find um a little uh letter uh which is tucked away um and i am going to uh, hey, professor look correspondence I, I immediately open it. Okay. With fantastic. caution, lad. Yep. I'm going to uh, show that to players. Um, and uh, <laughs> Look, Professor, you, uh, a handout. Get this handout. Exactly. So it is very, very clearly important. Would you like to read the correspondence? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, to the gentle Mr. Gladstone, I'll write this letter with the intention of introducing myself and in regard to our collaboration together. My name is Daniel Ridley and I am a reasonably accomplished composer in my own right. Chillingworth speaks very highly of you and your work, but has felt somewhat concerned about your well-being. He hopes that I can help you to finish the score to his play, Loki's Gift, within the next few weeks. Though I'm reluctant to interfere in any artist's creation, Chillingworth assures me that I am only to assist you in completing your task. I look forward to meeting you in person and hope that together we can fully realise your vision. Yours, Daniel Ridley. Loki's gift. Mm. A. That's the name of the scenario. <laughs> I put this Literally in the relevant pile. Pertinent. Exactly. Putting that to one side, you meanwhile, uh, you completed a... a, a um, a, a regular success as you start to sort of play the keys um professor and you will immediately realize this is absolutely beyond your ability you might have <laughs> been able to sort of jump in and do a little bit of playing but looking at this and looking at the notation this is this is very 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 technically difficult to play um bordering on you need to be an expert piano player to play this uh in in in, in its entirety um without a specific skill here this is unfortunately completely beyond you can i at least tell if it's like does it, is it bear similarity to what's in fashion at the time, or is this like totally out there? It appears to be somewhat unusual, not the but way it you is play not. It. Um, pardon me. Not the way you play it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's unusual, but it's not like oh my god, this is sinister and terrible. It's just a very, very complicated piece of music. I see. Well, it was good. He was, and it looks like he was working on something for a newer play. It's strange that he would have hidden this. His father would have been proud. He liked his music. And the fact that this is obscured means maybe there is something afoot. Well, at the very least, we've got someone else to shake down. All right, let's take this then and go and find the Lord. Two of you turn about and you begin to head downstairs, going to rejoin uh, Lord Bothwell, who... His Lordship. Uh, Thank you very much. His Lordship. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> And His he... Eminence, Your Grace. <laughs> no, wrong, wrong peerage, lad. Royal wrong Majesty, peerage. all hail Caesar. <laughs> I believe it's Kaiser, but sure. 
Um, so, uh, meanwhile, uh, Lord Bothwell, a couple of minutes ago, uh, you were <laughs> downstairs and you uh, were introduced to um, Catherine Gladstone. You probably have met Catherine a few times when you were around of Gladstone household in the same <laughs> situations that you would have met with um, Charles. Uh, she seems quite uh, pleased to see you. Uh, she's very polite. She's um, sort of, you know, in, in, in her sitting room and is happy to have a brief chat. As I mentioned, um, uh, Lord Gladstone walks to the side and he stands watching while you speak to her. What do you want to ask her? Oh, <clears throat> Catherine, it's been long. It's still all right. I call you Catherine, yes? Uh, of course, of course, please. Uh, go right ahead. Uh, well, how how have you... How are you, Catherine? Well, I'm, as, as I'm sure you can understand, I'm rather distressed by uh, the events that have taken place. So I will be spending some time in mourning, but uh, we all must go on, mustn't we, Father? And he nods and we should look back to you. Uh, I would like to... Thank you, chat. Take out a pipe? Uh, while while this conversation is happening, and I would I would like to just like start you know putting tobacco in it, just sort of like having a convivial conversation, congenial yep. conversation. Can never remember the, the difference between those two. It's fine. Uh, so I'll start doing that as we as we converse. Um, <clears throat> sure. Do you want to make Do you want to make a, a charm check or something like that if you're trying to deliberately put everybody at ease? Yeah, let's try that. Watch me fail. Uh, <laughs> pretty sure that's good. Hot strike. Oh, five points off. It is not a hot streak, unfortunately. Hot streak. <laughs> Would you like to spend five points of luck? Um, I'll, 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 I don't have any luck on my character sheet, oh, Jim. Dear, Were please, we meant to roll that before we Push started? the roll. <laughs> <laughs> please I'll go ahead and tobacco. roll, uh, ahead and roll uh, uh, 3d6, or times about five, and put that in as your luck. That's nice. Amazing. Not 13, bad. bad. 65, very good. Is that what it is? Because half of that. Not it's coming. true. So if you'd like, like to meet you, you 60, and for reference what the effect of this would be, they, you, you know, they, they're, they're tense at the minute, um, and they seem a little bit sad, and you get the vibe that um, Lord Gladstone is deliberately staying close. He mm. almost doesn't want to distress his daughter, but if you're very, very uh, congenial and able to put him at ease, considering he trusts you, it seems like he might be willing to just leave the two of you to have a private conversation, if you'd like. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll give you five points of luck and give myself a nice round sixty, which matches my sanity. Let's oh, go. Perfect. It's nice, nice. I love a nice round number. Great. Um, in which case, after a few moments, <laughs> Lord Gladstone will uh, nod appreciatively and will say, "I might leave the two of you to talk then," and will step outside. You do notice as soon as he leaves that Catherine's demeanor changes somewhat, and she'll lean in a little bit. Uh, she seems a bit more willing to talk without him there. Right, good. Um, so once, so like essentially for narrative purposes, we've had a nice little chit chatty conversation, what have you. Um, and then once he leaves, I will sort of as she leans and I go, now Catherine, how are you really? It's it's like I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sad, but you know, I, I'm trying to put on a, as brave a face as possible for father. I've had to do quite a bit of work to stop some of the more sordid details of Charles's last days and weeks filtering across to him. I think that it would tarnish his memory were my father to learn the full extent of my brother's you know, final days. I see. I see. That is a tricky situation. I, I do understand. Do you feel that it would help to unburden some of that on someone else. I'm very happy to share with you what I what I what I know. To, to be entirely clear, I, I know my father is looking for uh, some kind of strange ethereal answer to why Charles changed so suddenly. But I think it's rather simple. This Margaret Cornwell, she was a bad influence upon him. A, a real carousing. Uh, a woman who uh, introduced him to, to to gambling and to to places of ill repute and to 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 uh, smoking dens and and uh, to bad behavior in general. I, I think it's quite simple that she seduced him and took him down a path which he's a sensitive. So he was a sensitive soul, you see, and he was not ready for it. And uh, without 
you know, without her, when she left, presumably to find a, a, another more appealing mark or target, it broke his heart and he took his life. Yes, well, these artists do tend to have that sort of uh, way, I suppose. And that is sad to I assume, and I'll gesture with the pipe, when you say smoking, you don't mean the hearty kind. You mean the... Uh... <laughs> she, she like, she's a pr proper and polite mm. Victorian person, so she struggles over, like, ten seconds to, like, manage to say opium uh, and then lean <laughs> back and... Oh, <laughs> and, and ah, yes, yes. <laughs> well, look, Charles was a young man and... Um, We've all done silly things in our youth. Unfortunately, they seem to have just gone a little away from the boy. Do you happen to know the name of any of these establishments where young Charles was uh, frequenting with Miss Cornwall? I'm afraid that I very distinctly uh, do not, but I know where you can find her. I believe yes. she's performing at the Gaiety Theatre. Uh, she's in a performance of the shop girl, some kind of musical piece. I've been rudely, you know, looking at the papers and hoping that some terrible misfortune befalls her. She frowns grumpily. Yes, yes. You know, it's all very well and good to, uh, to try and find someone responsible for everything that happened. Try not to let it eat you up inside, though, Catherine. You're a good girl. You've got a wonderful life ahead of you. Your father loves you dearly, though he, you know, is very bad at expressing that sort of thing. I suppose we all are, really. It's the British way. Uh, but, um... If anything else comes up, and I'll hand her a card. She knows how to get in contact with me, but this is more like a direct line through, probably like an, um, a solicitor or something to that effect. But just, if anything comes up and you need to contact me, get in touch with my solicitor. Um, you can be assured of their secrecy and uh, ability to handle delicate situations, uh, and it will not get back to your father, I can assure you. She appears to appreciate that and she nods and she will take your card um, and before long your two companions will arrive downstairs um, and the three of you can reconvene. I will uh, gesture yeah. with, uh, to both of them going, Defendant! Professor! with an unlit pipe and then get up your and away. <laughs> now, I'll come back to that later. Um, Did you speak with Catherine? Yes! Yes! Is, is she well? Yes! Uh, well, you know, as well as can be in this situation. Of you know course. I mean. Present Such tragedy a... accepted. Um, yes. Well, listen, we had a root about in the old fellow's room. Um, you had a what? Found, uh, a a, a root <laughs> yeah. about in his room. Right, sorry, misheard. Continue. Mm. Mm. Uh, we found uh, uh, some correspondence, which I'll give you presently, your lordship. And uh, uh, the professor had a bit of a, uh, a, a play on the piano and found some some music that he was working on. Seems he was uh, commissioned for a play. Oh, play! Someone called Chillingworth. But I asked him to write some bell. music. I don't think. That... And nor do I recognise the play, unless I do, Jim. Uh. Not immediately. Uh, would you like to make? Would you like to make an education test? Fuck it. You're an, you are an actor, after yeah. all. Yeah. Come on. These are your circles, young Fenton. Watch this. Ooh. Okay. So, with a with a hard success, uh, first of all, it is not a common piece. It, it, it's not an established play. Mm. Um, it is also not running. Uh, as far as you're aware, uh, as part of any of the major, you know, uh, theatrical production houses um, that you've heard of. Otherwise, you would have maybe auditioned for it or something like that. It's probably a private piece that's being set up. That said, with a hard success, we're going to say that you have heard once or twice, you know, at a, at a night out with other uh, artists when you were trying to schmooze for work, it has been mentioned and it has been mentioned amongst the most of the like most 
enamored of art and sort of weird uh, people. You probably dismissed it because you went, there's going to be no money in that at all. It's it's a it's a complete, um, you know, a self-indulgent project for nothing. Yeah, yeah. And it's some new, like, trend. Yeah. Like, I don't recognize the, the author either or anything. So it's some uh, you, indie you, you, piece. You, You've never heard of it before. You assume it's being. You would assume it's being. It's being written. This is the first performance. So I don't. I also don't recommend. Of- Rec- I don't know Chillingworth. Is what I'm saying. Oh, like the, the sorry. Uh, no, you do or, not know Chillingworth. Um, or Daniel Ridley. Daniel Ridley. Uh, you might have heard of Daniel Ridley. The name clicks, but he's not a particularly well-established. Um, uh, he's not a particularly well-established uh, musician. What is he? He's a musician, though. He's a musician. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a uh, composer. He writes, uh, scores for theatre. You probably heard his name come up. Mm, sure. Chillingworth sounds like a pompous prick. So would I know <laughs> Chillingworth by any chance? It's a good um, point. It's a good point. Please go ahead and make a uh, credit rating check. Yay! Watch me fail this one. <laughs> oh, hey. no, but close. Despite best efforts. <laughs> okay. Um... I have succeeded. <laughs> Which is very, very easy to do. I have um, a lot of money. Uh, yes, so Chillingworth uh, is somewhat like you, actually. Uh, he is a rather rich uh, member of nobility. Um, he is not a lord, but he uh, does you know, have access to those upper circles. Um, and he is gentleman. En- enamored of all things artistic. Now, in particular, he made a pretty significant amount of money as a very successful painter and a very successful sculptor and after reaching the heights of uh of of those professions you know that recently he seems to have turned his hand towards uh other pursuits in theater and music as far as you are aware you also believe he has some kind of or he has some kind of like artist community that he runs in Soho. Uh, you've, you've heard it called the Artist's Mind, which they picked as this very, you know, uh, fancy name, but that's about as far as it goes. And you don't know where in Soho uh, they run out of. Very good. Uh... A lovely sound of players taking notes. Yeah, sorry. I, I, for this one specific, I'm just like, no, all of it. Look, I have a whole page already. Look no, it's all. brilliant. There's nothing, nothing better. Nothing better. Apologies. That's very, very exciting to watch on stream. I know. Um, right. Yes. Chillingworth. <clears throat> Painter, sculptor, etc., etc. Lay it all out for everyone else. Right. Well, I mean, it does seem that there was something more afoot than just. Your standard. Um, I don't if know. he's been entangled up in the Pacific Club, I think we have to be on our guard. Do you know something about the Pacific Club, do you, Professor? Oh, I. According to uh, my backstory on my character sheet here, one member in particular of the Pacific Club, chap Theodore Holcomb, he's a vile individual. He pours money into supporting the mad efforts of the most deranged occultists. It's not just it's slander a... for artists, is it? No, <laughs> no, no. He's a bad egg. He is. What was Rome his name? Theo. Theodore Holcomb. Um, if uh, Holcomb. if this if this young Charles had does indeed take his own life, he won't be the first who's been pushed into it by Holcomb. You have quite a web of connections already established going through uh, uh, as a result of some very, very good roles, but also a deep mystery. So you have the Gaiety Theatre that you could go to. You could try and speak to um, uh, uh, Cornwall, uh, who is there as, as, a, as, a, as a performer in The Shop Girl. You could head towards the Pacific Club and try and find what the links are there. Uh, you could try and track down uh, Ridley. You could try and track down Chillingworth in Soho. And then, of course, there are any uh, solutions or uh, uh, you know investigative arcs that the collection of you would like to take. For example, you could go and try and find a musician who can play the mysterious music that you've managed to gather together. Where do oh, you have some music, do you? <coughs> pa- pardon me? 
where did he kill himself? Where did he do it? Um, uh, he uh, he did it uh, on during a night out in Soho. Okay. Yep. Um, at 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 a at a at a, uh, at, a at a bar. The, the the establishment is is a pretty public place. It seems to be um, irrelevant. The exact location where he killed himself. Uh, you said you found music, did you? I. No, I can't. We got the music he was writing for Chillingworth. But I can't play the damn thing, but I can take a look at it. Go ahead. I have music theory. Does this count? Absolutely. Yep, music theory. What? Yep. Get yep. out of town. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> that, Jim let me know that I should have had music theory, theory on my character sheet as the two of you were off. And I was like, ooh, yes, please. Now, to be yeah. clear, you can absolutely attempt to play this with music theory. You know, you have studied instrumentation, but okay. it's a hard check um, just to get, you know, just, just just to be able to do it. Um, but that said, even looking at it, you can you can make a check as well. Yeah, I, this is, I don't want to play it right now at all. Uh, Lord Bothwell plays when it suits him. Uh, and this is absolutely just a, I want to get an idea of the kind of bugs, uh, the kind of sort of what the piece looks like, uh, you know, uh, what the arrangement is. Find Just the part standard. where reality starts breaking. Yeah. Is this the music from Beyond the Stars, etc., etc.? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is this piping. bringing Go down again. the, the many-eyed star lord well, that well, we know uh, and love? Make a, make a music theory check. If you get a zero one, this might be a real short campaign. Nope. Oh! <laughs> How Not about a fumble, fumble but uh, it's so. close. <laughs> <laughs> Can you spend uh, one point of luck to make that a fumble? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna argue if you will let me, Jim, that because this thing is in pieces at the moment, it is very hard. Like we'd have to stick it back together, and it's just too hard for me to make sense. But right now, does that absolutely? Work? Yeah. Now, if you'd like, uh, you can push this role by saying, "Oh, I just have to play this," and you could head back upstairs towards Lord Gladstone's piano and start going at it straight away. As with all good lords, you don't get something, you go, oh, never mind, try again later. It's not, it wasn't something I was that interested in anyway. No, 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 you know, just put it down to, if I can't do it right now, then eh, I don't need to do it right now. This is fine. Perfect. And we will, we, will, we will hold off sticking it together, playing it and doing something dumb a little bit later. <laughs> like this character, I'd like him to not go insane immediately. Immediately, okay, good. So, in which case, no, this is it's in pieces, and the only information you can get, like I have said to uh, the professor, it is very complicated. All right. Um. Well, it seems we've got two particularly clear directions. There's um, Miss Cornwell, who's a great actor in her own right, and honestly, just the opportunity to meet her is something I'm not. Um, uh, just extra benefit of the job, I suppose. Or there's Holcomb, who will uh, possibly threaten and uh, exsanguinate us. So I'll vote the actor. <clears throat> uh, Fenton, are you telling me that you have a more than professional interest in this, Miss uh, Miss Cornwall? Oh no, it's explicitly professional. Prof uh, is lordship. Uh, it's just my more mundane career uh, when we're not out ghost hunting. Oh, that's right. You're an actor, aren't you? I forget. <laughs> uh, something of an actor. You look yes. like a shop boy 99% of the time. It, it, Rough it, yourself it up a little. Transforms myself when I need to, sir. Oh, yes, of course. Acting. That makes perfect sense. Uh, yes, I think a visit to Miss Cornwall sounds reasonable. Professor? Yes. I want to have a little bit more information before we tangle with those madmen at the Pacific Club. Every Are you quite we well, Professor? I haven't been well <laughs> for some time. <laughs> good, good. Well, theatre it is. I believe she's playing at the Gaiety at the moment. Are you familiar with that, Fenton? Yeah, that's where I, where I first started, sir. Oh, when good. I, my first debut, as it was. So I'm quite familiar. Perfect. So, the collection of you will depart from uh, Lord Gladstone's house um, and you will go to make your way towards the Gaiety Theatre. Now, you are obviously going to still be beholden to the uh, to the effects of nature and you met with Lord 
uh, Gladstone rather late in the evening. So rather than depart directly and, you know, run to the theatre where it will be very, very late and almost certainly close, of course you can do that if you want, uh, my recommendation would be that you go and you sleep and you uh, gather anything that you need and you head in the morning. Um, does that sound amenable to everybody? Yes. Okay, no. perfect. So the collection of you split off. You head back towards, uh, I presume, a, a lovely house you have somewhere in London, uh, Lord Lord uh, Lord Bothwell. Oh, I probably also have a house in Kensington. Kensington is one of the very nice suburbs in uh, in London. So it would either be Kensington or I'm trying to think of another decent one. Probably Kensington or close by. Excellent. If anyone in chat knows UK, the UK better than I do off the top of my head, please throw a suggestion in You're just near hyde park it's beautiful mm. uh what about yourself uh what professor where are you headed to and where am i headed to yeah where, where, where do you think where do you think you live oh uh, you hang your probably like some like little tiny tumble down apartment that uh, cost me the absolute minimum so i can uh Quinch. would you live like in or near the college yeah nearby but uh you know Somewhere, somewhere I can, you know, crawl into a cave and be a, be alone with my thoughts and my books. You know? <laughs> I'm assuming Your that the theories. tiny apartment is just filled with books. Yeah, 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 place. yeah. But the seclusion is where it's at. Do you do you sleep in an actual bed, or do you just sort of get into an armchair or at a desk, yeah. kind of, you know, for a while? That's it. Chair to books to chair. All right. To bathroom to chair. Perfect. That's all you need. All right, what about what about uh, what about yourself, Colin? Where do you where do you hang your head? Oh, five bucks, mate. I'm sorted. Uh, I'll head <laughs> out. I'll find like a. I think there's like a big boarding house or similar something for like, you know, cheap and cheerful. Uh, where I'll head over and find myself a, a single bed for the evening. Lock all my stuff up and fall asleep with my feet still on the trunk. So if anyone tries to go through it, I'll give them a clobber. Unlike Charles, you know where you have to hide things, so it's oh, yeah. all uh, it's all very good. <laughs> okay. Brilliant. Well then, uh, jumping straight across the next day, the collection of you gather together and will head over towards the Gaiety Theatre um, and arrive just before noon. Uh, there is a matinee performance uh, which is taking place just as you arrive, so you have a couple of minutes before that will end. Um, and then there will be more performances tonight. And you can see billing for the Shop Girl, the performance which is currently running, um, uh, placed all around the outside of the building. The Gaiety Theatre is, is, is a nice, it's a well-established place. Um, you can see a stage door off towards one side, which is being not guarded, but there's somebody standing outside to make sure people just don't go tearing in. Um, and then there's some attendants outside who are, you know, at the front who will sell food and tickets and usher people into the building. What's your approach here? What are you aiming to do? Have I patronized this location before? Uh... Almost that. certainly, it's a it's a it's a relatively well known theatre. Uh, in that case, I will bustle on in uh, and announce that I would like to speak to the manager. Is what what is is, is um, such and such still here? Absolutely, fantastic. This sounds this sounds like a, a credit rating check. Absolutely. <laughs> what what am I useful for if not throwing money around? Splashy cash. That's oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, Absolutely. Right, uh, do you want to do you want to make up a do you want to make up a manager of the Gaiety Theatre for me? Uh, Albert Chester. Uh, Albert Chester. Albert Chester. Uh, you know, kind of a, a larger man who tries his best to uh, dress up, but always manages to look disheveled. Rush out, and he's fantastically happy to see you. He remembers that time a few, you know, a year or so ago, where you bought out an entire wing of the theatre just so that you could uh, watch a performance. And you know, uh, he, he loves it. He, he's very happy to see you, and will introduce himself to your colleagues. And unless either of you have darted off to go to you know a different entrance or look for a different approach, um, he will uh, make any conversation that you want. He's also very happy to take you upstairs into one of the private boxes where you can peek in and get a glimpse of the play uh, as it is happening. Of course, it's halfway done by now, but that's quite all right. I think it's, you know, unless we're on a time schedule, which I don't think we are. Uh, He's already will... dead. <laughs> we make a very good point. And uh, shall we uh, watch the end of the play? Certainly. And uh, do you think you could maybe get us some um, uh, nibbles? 
Of course, sir. how could I forget? I'm so sorry. I will see to it at once. Uh, you're Thank done. you, Chester. My usual box, if you don't mind. Absolutely, absolutely. Peanuts. Um, <laughs> this is a good gaff being wealthy. This is nice. Um, what? It's this nice is living. being oh, wealthy. Right. Money is pleasant, isn't it? Is it? I just call this living. <laughs> Suppose you would. Well, you know, yes. <laughs> um, you'll have some food uh, brought towards you. Um, you can watch from the box. Um, the Shop Girl is a real play. Um, it's a sweet little piece about a, um, a young woman who um, falls in love with a poor student who is desperately, um, you know, unsuitable for her uh, because uh, she has no money. Uh, but then she finds out through um, uh, uh, somebody who arrives and starts visiting her shop that she's actually the inheritor to a vast mining wealth from an estranged father. And she becomes incredibly rich and gets married with the student. They live happily ever after. I keep on and looking Margaret, across at the Lord as this, like, you know, mass inheritance thing. Just just kind of thinking, you know, <laughs> how many connections do I need? <laughs> Very true. Um, Margaret Cornwell, of course, is playing as the shop girl, um, and she is crushing it. She's a very, very good a a actress. Um, you 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 know uh colin because you're aware of these things that um uh this might be one of the last performances you get to see um margaret cornwell doing this type of thing in because she is a little older she is in her late 30s now um and she is moving away I from being able to play this kind of you know young character but she is, is still um she's still a star at this stage in these kind of roles um and you can watch and applaud and it's all very very fun um and uh before long the theater manager uh, will come back and be very very happy to speak with you um and any questions you have he will offer to introduce you to the cast if you would like yes i'd like to, to give my congratulations personally fantastic I'll, I'll arrange to see it at once and thank you lee will lead you through towards the back uh down through uh, knocks on a door and you can hear a hushed conversation it's not out of the ordinary for people to come back and see uh performers after their their shows but uh with um the manager having stepped in this is clearly given a, a note of importance um and he will dart away and before long you can step into a dressing room it looks like uh, margaret's been performing in this role for a long time so it's you know she's very well established here um it's full of all kinds of trinkets and gifts uh that she has received over the years she's a very beautiful woman and she stands up and greets the collection of you very, very warmly. Um, could I get, uh, I think, why don't we get Colin to make a psychology roll? Okay. Psychology. No. Ooh, you are starstruck. I'm a little bit smitten. <laughs> Just a little bit smitten. A smidge of smit. <laughs> that sounds very odd. A little um, bit smitten as a treat. A little smitten. Um, <laughs> motions you all in uh sits you down um she lounges on a, like a chaise lounge and will and which is uh, the appropriate action uh and will say so how can i assist uh, how can i assist you you want you are uh, just wanted to speak with me in particular was there a work you were mentioning another performance or uh, what's the uh what's the reason for your visit you knew charles gladstone didn't you she has <laughs> she what that's what we're here for she will frown draw back and you can see kind of a calculating uh you know or a shift over her eyes and she nods and yes charles i uh i knew him very well we were we were very very close and tragic to hear of his passing how did he die i understand it that he took his own life you were amazing on that? stage I just flick straight towards you. Oh, thank you. And and we'll derail the conversation <laughs> to talk to you about the nuance of performance for a little I bit. I utterly fail to be impressive. <laughs> I stammer um, through, occasionally offer a compliment at an inopportune time, and then keep on trying to half assly bring it back to the dead guy that she knew. Uh, yep. it, the whole thing is uh, rather painful. The Margaret Cornwell is your significant person on your character sheet. Do you actually want to make a power check for me? Uh, yes. Just, just, yeah. To keep my shit together. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think you keep your shit together, but I think you're so... They say never meet your heroes, but they were wrong. This is perfect. You're having such a good time. Um, do you want to take a bonus die when you first have to make a sanity check? Um, yes, and thank we'll, you, uh, As a result of having... As uh, I remember, you know... I think back. 
This is why we do it. I really hope the sanity check is against something she does. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when she comes at me with a knife. <laughs> yeah. Or tries to push me up a building. Um, uh, um, eventually you can try and pull the conversation back. Why did he do it? Uh, I'm sorry, what did you say? Why did he do it? Well, I assume he was broken hearted. You know, he had become quite obsessed with his work and frankly, quite boring. I left him and uh, I assume that uh, the shock was too much for him to bear. You don't sound that sort of full about it. Well, yeah, my friend, I'm afraid to say that uh, if, if I took to heart the many men who have uh, beat their beat their breasts and uh, cried after my absence, then I'd find myself quite distraught. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> right. You you say he got uh, got obsessive in his work. Do you happen to know what work he was working on, Miss Cornwall? Also, may I just say, exemplary performance. Really oh. elevate the art form. Why, thank you. She derails the conversation again, goes into detail <laughs> about the performance. After about five minutes, you managed to pull it back. Uh, he was involved uh, with a pl uh, pr pr writing the score for a uh, play uh, being put on, I believe, at the L Green. Loki's Gift. Loki's Gift, that's right, yes. Uh, Chillingworth's pet project. That, 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 that's right. Yes, uh, I, I believe that was. You're uh, going to be gracing uh, that performance with you, your, uh, your, yourself? Uh, Bam? Well, yes. I was invited to take a role, but I'm afraid that I've had this uh, this position for quite some time and couldn't step away to uh, indulge Chillingworth's work. Besides, there's not much money in it. You've no. uh, you you've um, no Chillingworth personally, do you? Yes, yes, I've met him several times. I actually introduced him to Charles. The two of them got along like a house on fire. Ah. Yeah. Very good. Do you, uh, do you happen to know where we might find the man? I'm uh, looking for uh, well, uh, the, the more course. information. I can give you uh, the address of his studio in Soho. Please. I've, I've been interested in his work for a while. I understand he was a painter and a sculptor before he set his sights on music and theater. He's had a variety of uh, hobbies. It's uh, just two blocks from Soho Square uh, near the palace, and she gives you the exact address. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Very good. Uh, okay, fantastic. Now what? Uh, Anyone else have any more questions? Uh, I step forward. I'd be remiss if I didn't say, uh, miss. Um, uh, it truly were exceptional. I am something of an actor uh, myself. We've so actually, no questions we've then. actually Thank performed you for your time. at the same. If you could just sign this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, she, I like, she. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Dragged she out of the room. Like massive smile. Oh, an actor. I, I, I simply must see. Uh, we, I, I simply must see you, you, you in performance. Please, uh, uh, give me a monologue. So something grand. Oh. One of the greats. Uh, do you want to make an acting check? As on the spot, she gets you to do, you know, Lear or Macbeth or. <laughs> yeah. Um. I will. So, uh, Colin blushes at first deeply, and then goes, uh, uh, "I can't do it at the mo a moment, please." Uh, he turns around, and you see him reaching inside. He wears like inside his jacket, and he's fumbling around or something. And when he turns back, he's fixed uh, like a leather mask over the top half half of his face. And in fairness, he does seem to transform. Once he's in it, he loses any of the the bluster and the stumble, and he will throw himself as quickly as he can into quite a competent monologue. Uh, I will roll acting. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. he is almost completely incapable of doing it without the mask in which to find his character. That is incredible. And I think it is is—it is truly a transformation. And you see Colin actually, you know, embody some of the, uh, you know, artistic uh, energy that uh, everyone that you've spoken to has been referring to so endlessly. Uh, even uh, e even Cornwall is taken back a little bit and she watches and at the end she will give a very earnest clap, which then after she realizes kind of turns into a, oh, ha ha, we're all, we're all having fun. <laughs> but you see like a, a genuine kind of impressiveness think, in her eyes. I think I'm not, I'm not amazing. I think it's just, it's like, it's, it's definitely competent and it's a, it's a shtick. Like he does the, it's entirely mask work and he changes voice and everything. And mm. As soon as you uh, take it off again, it's back to sort of like 
being completely starstruck and a little bit confused. Excellent. Well, she will. She will. She will sign. Uh, uh, what? What do you have her sign? Uh, playbill. Uh, playbill. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, playbill. Uh, and then um, after uh, finishing this conversation, unless there's anything else you want to ask, uh, the collection of you can depart from the Gaiety Theatre. Um, I will organise with a manager to have a very large bouquet of flowers delivered to Miss Cornwall's. A thanks for her time and for the excellent performance. All right, fantastic. Um, uh, she, as you turn to leave, she will. Uh, she says one last thing, just as the collection of you go, and she just sort of says, "Oh, hold just a moment. Um, you couldn't, if you're going to see, you're going to meet with uh, uh, with uh, Chillingworth. You couldn't give him something uh, for me, could you?" Oh, depends yeah. what it is. Yes, of course. Anything. Uh, it, <laughs> Uh, he, he, she turns around, she walks back to one of the sort of shelves covered in knickknacks, and there's all this, as I said, there's all these gifts that she's received over the years that are, um, you know, displayed very prominently, but one of them is tucked away at the back, and it's actually wrapped in, in like, bundled paper, and she takes it and she says, um, he, he gifted to me a, 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 a statuette uh, some time ago, um, and I I've, I've, uh, don't quite care for it. I, mm -hmm. I think... Um, I think he, he, he uh, I think I best return it. Um, and she will hand you the bundle of paper and, and, and hold it out towards uh, one of oh, you. Oh, to sorry, it's like a paper wrapped statue or something. Yes. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Exactly. Uh, uh, if, if no one steps forward, I think uh, uh, like Lord Botha will just go, Fenton! I dead. Stumble a little, then, and then walk forward. I think as soon as a statuette was mentioned, I have lost a boat of enthusiasm because we have been around the block a little yeah, with I know, uh, right? Yeah, he, nonsense. So he when goes. he first like lunged forward to show off, he's Actually, now would... and he keeps on looking across the professor. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, I would. I would know out of like I should know. No, it's just I'll what you it. said. It it rings a little alarm bell mm -hmm. in your head, but you know. Um, we can deliver this to him. Um, can I, if I peel back the paper, what, I'll just, just enough to look inside. You absolutely do. Uh, it is a jade statue. No. Um, it is of a uh, woman wearing uh, robes. The woman looks a little bit possibly. Um, like, uh, uh, get to that, a little <laughs> bit like, like Cornwall. Um, and she's reaching up with one hand. She's wearing this long trailing dress and the dress finishes, it terminates in these strange kind of flames or curved mm -hmm. sort of tendrils, you know, I don't want to say tentacles, but uh, anyway, it's a very lovely piece of work and gazing upon it is Deeply unsettling. Oh boy. And can you make a sanity check with a bonus die and the rest of you just a regular one as you all gaze upon the statue? Guys, Oop. look what I found. Oop. Oh. Uh, it is just a single point of sanity damage upon a failure. Pink. Very good. Hmm. Uh, in that case, I feel absolutely justified in just kind of looking at it and then going, Henson! If you wouldn't mind. Uh, yeah, I'll scroll it away in an in inside pocket. Um, yep. And I'm ready Brilliant. to depart. And the collection of you can turn about and you can leave uh, the Gaiety Theatre. So, it's probably, uh, you know, early afternoon when you leave after the matinee performance. Where is your next destination? Uh... I'd like to ask Fenton if he's got rocks in his in his in his brain, lad. You got rocks in your head. Rocks? No, Professor. You weren't listening to a thing she said. We just learned that she's brought one young man to his death, and now you're so keen to follow him. It's a, a, a little different than the, the Charles Professor. I, I know what I'm doing. I'm aware of the things that I mean. You saw her. You saw her, her act. She's in, she's incredible. That's how they get your lad. You have to keep your wits about you. Uh, you don't know what snakes are in disguise in this town. Uh, you surely you're not accusing Miss Cornwall of something nasty. Young Charles got tangled up with her, and now he's dead. Charles was attached to, to Chillingworth in the others. I think that's where we'll find our our 
dark misdeeds. Miss Cornwell is an actor and one Did of the greatest. Did you not see? Did you not see how she waved waved away all our concerns about anyone else she's been tangled up with? She said it herself. She can't. Uh, she she can't spend too much time thinking about all those all those young lads that she's broken their heart and left them to the side of the road. Sure, but they're all they 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 were younger. They they didn't understand the the the, the craft as, as as much. They made mistakes. I'm sure. I'm sure they were just less experienced overall. It's been good knowing you, Fenton. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere, <laughs> Professor. I, I, I'm quite all right. Oh, I can still hear his voice. <laughs> professor, the eyes. Pro professor, Such a promising young lad, Profe professor, that traipsing don't, around on the funny. stage. It's not funny, professor. That actually happened. <laughs> you will be missed. No, your lordship, right, you can wait. hear me, right? Your what? lordship. Yes. What? Pulls up. Yeah. I. I'd okay. say it's about time for uh for for uh, tea, don't you? Shall we go to one of the, the, the clubs then? Yes, I was thinking perhaps the Pacific. Or the, or the place in Soho and return this statue. Uh, I was entrusted with its delivery and I'd like to mm, have it out of my pocket as soon as possible. It does have an eerie quality to it. Yes, I'd that thing gives me the willies. I'd be inclined to hold it onto it for a bit longer. I think it's safer in our possession than anywhere else. You're a... Uh bit of an occultist, aren't you, Professor? What? How dare you? I'm sorry, I thought that was your area of expertise. Quite by accident, I assure you. Oh, I see. Uh, so you don't have uh, experience in the occult? I have experience. I have experience in putting it down wherever I see it. Very good. Very good, man. Uh, do you think you could take a look at this? strange green tentacled woman statue uh, give I'd us your professional had. opinion i think i better had and i already got an extreme success in that sanity roll the keeper so uh you did you did which is going to help you in absolutely no way for this when i look at it a second time yeah you can look at it a second time it's not gonna it's not gonna take any additional sanity but why don't you make an occult roll i oh. gladly do so Excellent. All what right. is this? Why does she have it? And why is what it bad is news bullshit. for us? Um, so first of all, uh, this appears to be a very, very old uh, idol. You think for a second, could this have been something that uh, Chillingworth made and gave to her, but it does not appear, that does not appear to be the case. Uh, this, is, this is something that has been around for quite a while. Um, that said, you cannot immediately identify a source for it. It does not appear to be instinctively from any, uh, you know, particular uh, artistic cultural history. It is almost out of place, but old as you gaze upon it. It is creepy bad vibes, but probably not immediately problematic. It was a success, Jim. That that is a success. It's 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 a statue. It probably represents something bad, but it itself is just a statue. Okay. Can yeah. I have a look at that again, Professor? I don't think that's a good idea. Just just give me a little look. Just just, I just want to have a look at the face. Just you hold it up. Um, I want to see if there's any not touch. <laughs> I, I get quite close. Are there any distinguishing marks that makes this more than a passing resemblance to Miss Cornwell? Like, is there a prominent mole or anything that would just identify it as like it's her or is it just woman um sure why don't you why don't you make a why don't you make a spot hidden check you know it's the darndest thing you could have sworn it looked really 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 like uh cornwall uh when it was when it was in her hands but now it's got kind of a you know, a Mona Lisa aspect to it. Wherever you are in the room, it watches you. And whenever, wherever you are in comparison, you you can kind of see, oh, maybe it actually looks slightly like you. Or maybe it looks, and it's so all just the little... is holding it up. It's got to be... I've <laughs> no, got a five not... o'clock shadow going on here. It's not quite that extreme, but there's just... It's, it, and, and the face is pretty, like, it's more like a... It's a suggestion. Okay. Um, but it's yes. a mask. 
Oh, and that immediately sets it off. Yes, very good. <laughs> oh, talking of masks, as we meander in the general direction of wherever the fuck we're going next, Fenton, that was quite a good performance you put on back there. I don't think I've ever seen you perform before. Oh, thank you, your lordship. Uh, you may have. I've been in a number of performances, normally just supporting roles and asides. I, I like to think that I just, uh, you know, blend into the background, hardly noticed. Mm. Have you tried any of the uh, Greek theatre? It's entirely that... done in masks. Oh, yes. It's, uh, it's, it's what I originally studied. It's my the area of expertise, I suppose. It's These masks are an older sort embodying, you know, particular characters and, and, and roles. It's my principal interest. It's why I pursue the craft. I see. Well, interesting. Perhaps we should have to... Uh... <clears throat> I have some ideas. And I just sort of, like, wander off at that. I'm not going to lay anything else down. Yeah. Mm, I hope they pay well. <laughs> so what are what is the direction that the, the the collection of you are heading in? Is it to the Pacific Club or is it to uh, the Soho studio? Um, I think we chase down Chillingworth first. Yeah, that's fine. My mine would be Soho first because again, if Artist's the... mind. All right. Well, that's well Holcomb the... doesn't have any direct connection with. Charles at the moment, except through the Pacific Club, whereas Chillingworth does. Um, Bothwell will make noises about food and tea, but otherwise is happy to go wherever. All right. So the, the you... place in Soho is like his workshop, right? It's 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 his studio. Uh, you're not uh, you you would uh, based on your knowledge of these kind of places. You know the patrons of the arts. What it probably is it's a large apartment, um, and he probably has a room at the top or something. But he's done it up so that it's just got like a bunch of. You would expect that there would be a bunch of people in there, all of them practicing art in some kind of way. Um, and it's just a, sort of like a fancy pants place for people to hang out and be part of an artistic club. So I mean, if we made our way there, if we got food on the way, and then that th stopped in, would it be? unfashionably late no no i think it would be entirely it would be entirely reasonable for the collection of you to pop up shall we do that then as in go uh, by the pacific club to oh, i was gonna say straight to straight to chillingworth oh very good yes. Yes, yes yes all right so you can get some food on the way eat make sure your bellies are filled and uh even if they are slightly queasy after seeing that strange statue and you can't help but think about it sitting uh in your pocket squirreled away uh but before long you'll um step back out head towards uh soho and eventually arrive at the studio this is a very busy busy kind of fashionable uh nightclub slash you know, performance centric area a lot of theaters in this general uh, you know generally near here that you can be easily accessed and the studio itself um is uh set up at at the uh, the the corner of an intersection of several streets um and it's quite a large tall thin building um uh, that comes straight out onto the road so you approach um you can see the door you can hear music kind of very faintly from inside so these like pounding speakers that we might get nowadays <laughs> but you can hear that there's conversations and there is activity about um, a sharp knock on the door unless any of you want to take any additional preparations we can just lob the statue in a window and bolt <laughs> absolutely um, always plan B always plan B exactly okay then um, I uh, I take an action to gird my loins alright uh, I'll please... also gird Jackson's loins <laughs> <laughs> I'll, assist, I'll assist in the girding <laughs> take a bonus well, dose well Talks first, thinks later. So he, uh, he absolutely is just going to walk up and knock on the door. Brilliant. Tuk, tuk, tuk. There's um, silence for you know a minute or two, and you can hear movement around. And then the door just kind of creaks open, um, and this very, very, very small, thin woman answers. Um, she's quite young, probably nineteen, twenty yeah, at the at the oldest. With kind of sunken eyes and dark hair and very very pale skin it's not exactly the grudge but it's kind of the grudge um mm -hmm. as she kind of opens the door and observes the collection of you um uh with this tired with tired eyes and just doesn't say anything just stands there for a couple of seconds eyes kind of unfocusedly glancing from one of you to the other hello miss uh, oh we're looking for chillingworth is he around 
She turns, opens the door, and walks up, expecting you apparently to follow. What an odd young lady. That was rude. Opium, I think. <laughs> Just immediately look at Fenton, like with a and how <laughs> kind of look. About that? <laughs> yeah. Everyone's got hobbies. <laughs> and such. I haven't dabbled myself. Uh, it's too expensive a habit. I couldn't support it. <laughs> <laughs> Love to be wealthy and have a lot more bad habits. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Wealthy people have particularly bad habits. Pulls out the pipe and like goes to sort of like you know again pack it Racks full of the tobacco. Line. And there's, yeah, I, you know, I really. You seem to have some funny ideas about things, Fenton. And then he like puts the pipe away and walks inside. <laughs> so the collection of you step in, shut the door behind you, um, and head up the stairs. Uh, this is a three-story building, including the ground floor. I always get mixed up about where if the first and ground gets included, but there is, there is yeah. a ground, a first, and a second um, in this building. Um, and uh, you can head upstairs and you can start wandering through. The house is built with a staircase along one side and then rows of rooms. And as you m climb the staircase up, up, up you can see some of the doors the rooms are ajar and even the ones that aren't you can hear noise coming out of and you can get a vague sense of activity coming from within each one this place is full of practicing artists you can hear music and singing you hear these rhythmic thumps from one room with the door open you can see people sort of like leaping past practicing these great uh, strides and dance moves uh, one room that has the door all the way open you can see uh, there are a group of people all standing in front of um, uh, these kind of easels that are set up and they're drawing um, and there is a, a, a nude male model who is sort of set up to one side and they appear to be they appear to be drawing him um, there, there's music there's everything you can imagine you smell clay from one one of the rooms and sort of the very very heavy scent of sculpture and work um all the while just ahead of you waiting at the top of every landing uh is this um is this dark haired young woman she appears to be leading you up 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 towards the top floor as you go through is there anything else that the three of you would like to do any glimpses you want to try and get uh, anything you want to ask um she this woman doesn't appear particularly hurried so you know, you can stop to have a conversation or peek inside a room if that's something you'd like. I think uh, Bothwell will sort of, like, walk through the area, sort of hands behind his back, kind of just happily looking around a place that is full of the thing that he holds most dear, artistry, uh, and very much just, like, takes it all in, um, doesn't won't engage like unless someone engages with him but we'll absolutely like you know pause every now and again to watch some practicing performance then sort of give a small golf clap and then move on he's very engaged great okay um what about the other two of you nothing in particular i'm i'm watching it it's it's no i think i'm a little the, the statue unnerved me slightly and i don't super trust old mate up here um i guess do i see any signs of uh, this uh, of other opium users does it seem like it's a habit sprawled throughout the building a lot of people kind of out of it and or are most of the people that are actually practicing their craft seemingly clear-minded do you want to make a psychology check yeah sure psychology how's that all right that's pretty Hard good success um okay so First of all, with a hard success, glancing around, um, you do not spot anybody uh, who appears to be um, under the effects of opium. Everyone seems pretty passionately, uh, to be pretty passionately undertaking their art. That said, they all seem a little weird, like they're, they're super focused, they're having a great time, but none of them appear to be, you know, actively on drugs, and you can hear talking and conversation, and, and everyone seems uh, relatively well and healthy. So what, um, what, what makes me think it seems weird then? Um, they, they're so enthusiastic. They're so into it. But that said, you know, they're, they're bright and they're animated um, and they're talking normally. But this is the kind of thing where, you know... Uh, kind of like a cult? You, like it's yeah, a little, it's a little goodbye vibes happy. only sort of thing? 
Yes, that's a really good way of putting it. Good vibes yeah. only. Uh, let's keep at it. Like you, you as a practice actor know that you know you don't you don't keep this like hardcore kind of like enthusiasm all the time. The work is work, and sometimes it gets hard. But yeah. no, they, these people really seem to be kind of pushing that smile. Um, two other things though, um, when you reach the top floor. Um, uh, you will see that there is a, there is a, a another small staircase that leads towards an attic, and you will get the slightest whiff of, uh, you know, heady smoke that comes Attics. drifting down from there. So there appears to be some kind of usage up in that room. Uh, but more specifically, um, as you reach that second that that second floor and you pass by, um, and you pass by this 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 young woman, um, her eyes dart towards you. Um, you revise your opinion of her. She seems incredibly uh, sort of restrained and odd, but you get a, a, a very deep sense of fear all of a sudden because you realize that she isn't actually, she isn't actually um, uh, uh, high, she's terrified. Um, oh, and good. is just kind of vibrating and really not sure what to do. Is this right about where, as, as we're about to go into the room? Right about show? as you reach, as she gestures towards a room uh, with the door slightly ajar, and you can hear just this faint whistling from inside it. Presumably, Chillingworth's office. Very good. Uh, if I have noticed none of this, so unless someone stops me, I'll give everyone the opportunity to do that. Straight to the door, and uh, is it? It's closed or open. Uh, it is it is just a jar, so you can step right in and put, push your way in. I'll I will you know knock, and then immediately step through the door. But you know, I'm I'm not I'm not the sort for waiting, uh, unless someone says hold on a sec. Amazing. He's making sure there's a that he's always aware of the escape route. Uh, well, there's the staircase that goes all the way down past all those rooms. Otherwise, uh, towards one side, there's a there's a dumb waiter. That appears to like go through the entire building, so you could possibly plunge headfirst into that. Yeah, That's also known as pulling a Charles. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, there's windows, obviously, of course. Um, <laughs> well, we solved the mystery. Hey. <laughs> um, it was, it yeah. was an attempt at escape. Actually, genuinely, it might have been. <laughs> um, you step forward into this room, the collection of you. You take one last moment, Professor, to look towards the. Um, uh, you know the escape routes uh, before you come in. Uh, you step into this this lovely, well decorated room. Uh, there are incredible paintings all along the walls, and you would assume these to all be Chilling Chillingworths. They 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 they're great. These sort of grand vistas. There's sculptures dotted about, um, and the man himself is kind of recl re reclining on a chair. Um, he's got his feet up on the desk. Um, uh, papers sort of everywhere, and he's writing notes on something. When he sees the collection of you, step inside. And his broad smile comes across his face, and he goes, "Ah, and you know, visitors," and uh, shuts the the, the notebook, uh, pops down uh, his pen, um, and moves forward um, and nods as you all come in. Says, "Hello, you visitors. I'm I'm glad to see you. All. Come, come in, come in. Uh, thank you, Ruth. That will be all." And the young girl, Ruth, uh, turns back and, and and seems to vanish away um, as uh, Chillingworth smiles. Um, he'll stand up briefly and shake any hands offered to him. Introduce himself, Ernest Chillingworth, at your service. Uh, it's very good to uh, make your acquaintances. Who, who are the collection of you? I will immediately go and shake his hand and say, ah, oh, Chillingworth, I don't believe we've had the pleasure of making acquaintance. I am Lord Bothwell, uh, uh, Ashley Babbage. Uh, you may have heard of me, but... Mm, I believe I have. You're an appreciator of fine things in the world, if I'm not mistaken. I am, and I must say, I am thoroughly impressed with your establishment here, full of uh, artists who seem to truly understand the word art. Well, I'm so glad that you appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. And then, well, the two of you, I look slightly familiar, young man. Have I seen you about somewhere? He frowns. Oh, yes, these are my associates. I will introduce both but let them do their own introductions as well should they wish to a place to meet you my name's uh, colin fenton I, I am an actor of sorts you may have seen me uh, tooling around with the craft uh, never worked in an establishment such as this the space for creating is uh, quite incredible sir you you're the boy you wore a you wore mask unless i'm mistaken uh, yes 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 uh, I, I do tend to uh, for the role when it suits that's right 
Excellent, excellent. It's always good to have a, an, an aspect of performance to, to guide it. I think it breeds creativity to apply these restrictions. And what about yourself? And he turns towards you, Professor? Lucas Mooresville, Professor. Professor Mooresville, and what is it you are a professor of? Mysteries of the Universe. Oh, how exciting. How very no, droll. Not exciting. <laughs> No? Oh dear. Well, I clearly have the wrong idea of academia. I thought it was all red hot adventure, start to finish. Um, I've met many well, academic son. <laughs> <laughs> I assume uh, he's a younger man. Like, uh, yeah, he's, he's probably he's probably a ju just shy of 40, something like oh, that. Oh, in that case, no, I wouldn't say, yeah. We've met many adventurous today, Mr. Jennyworth. Mm. Um, uh, so with a smile, he will anyway. He will lean, lean back. Uh, actually, he's probably a bit younger, uh, early thirties. Um, but sits back. Um, well, what can I do for the three of you? Why have you uh, seen it upon yourself to come and visit? Not that you're not welcome, please. Uh, I, I'm always interested in meeting new people and learning about them. Oh, um, well, I. If you have heard of me, I assume uh, you are would know that I am relatively good friends uh, with Lord Gladstone, whose son recently, uh, unfortunately, left us. Um, I understand he may have been doing some work with you, and we were just wondering the, the sort of nature of the work. I, I was rather fond of the boy, and, um, well, I'd like to know what he was working on. You know, just give me yes. some peace of mind. Yes, yes, I, I knew Charles. I'll tell you all about him, but very briefly, first of all, you're very close to him. What 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 made the two of you close? Oh, shared love of the arts. The boy was an excellent musician, as I'm sure you would have known if you knew him well. Uh, and I, I did my best to foster that in him. Uh, right, and what about the, the other two of you? Did either of you know Charles well? I was friendly with him in passing. That's right. Um, I've awesome. worked with him in the, in the past. He seemed a good enough sort. His father's asked us to look into uh, his death. Do you like his father? Oh, he seems a, a, a pleasant enough sort. He's um, he pays well, and that's good. Ah, oh, that's yeah, it is good. And, and professor, you haven't met the boy? No. No. What impression did you get of him from what you've learned about him? Seemed like a promising young lad got mixed up in the wrong crowd. Mm, I see. I see. Yes. Well, I mean, there's a. Uh, he was definitely a promising young man. Absolutely. I hired him to per, to write the score for an upcoming play I'm producing uh, called Loki's Gift. Oh, I'm not familiar with that one. Would you be able to give us a? Uh, no spoilers, obviously, but a general gist of the play. Uh, it's a themes, well, etc. The th the, well, the theme is uh, the theme is is mysteries of the universe, I suppose, Professor. I'm sure you quite enjoy it. It is it is about our place within it. It's about philosophy. I, I'm a man who enjoys uh, philosophy, actually, and he goes on this like mm -hmm. long kind of uh, very self indulgent polemic about like all of the books he's read and all of the um the, the different kinds of philosophies that he enjoys. Um, uh, but, but yes, it's it, it, uh, no spoilers though, as you said. But why don't you come along? We're doing a we're doing a dress rehearsal in uh, in two days time so tomorrow evening. And we'd love to uh, we'd love to see uh, you know the opinions of the public. You can come and visit it. I'd be delighted. Thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, yes. As I understand it. Um... Uh, Charles was writing the the music for the piece. Uh, was it finished before his passing? Is is the play ready to continue, or will it be uh, incomplete and improvised the, on the spot? Uh, well, the 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 play. I mean, we're, we're tinkering, as I'm sure you can understand. We will be tinkering right up into the to the very moments we perform, and then I'm sure we will continue to tinker and alter as we go. But the music, well, uh, no, Charles didn't finish. I, I brought on a a man named uh, another composer, Ridley, who I'm familiar with, to try and assist him with it. But unfortunately, uh, 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 I, I don't believe that Charles passed away, and uh, uh, Ridley has taken over the production of the piece now. Does Ridley place his own name on the product? Does he acknowledge Charles's contributions or is he passing this as his own? Um, I'm not entirely 
Sure, I can find out quickly. I think I have a copy of uh, correspondence and he starts to sort of go for his desk. But then just as he did with the last time you asked him a, a question, he kind of hesitates and he looks towards the three of you and he says, what do you think about credits given? Do you believe it's important? Do you, uh, do you talk often about the work you do for uh, people like Gladstone, things like that? Seems you're following up things on his behalf, right? As long as the job gets done. Right, but you don't care about building a reputation? Nothing like that? I have what a reputation, do? Matt. Why would I need to build another? I see, I see. What about yourself, young man? Well, of course you build your... It's what you get um, work on is reputation. So yes, I think it's important. Good, good. Um, he will pull out a, a collection of, you know, that's rough kind of like musical staves and scripts, put them together and he'll say, yes, yes, we're writing uh, a co-compositor at this stage because, of course, he wasn't around to finish the piece, but written by uh, Gladstone and by Ridley. Collaborative. Okay. All right. Uh, again, out of interest in what Charles was working on, would we be able to speak to Ridley about the piece? I uh, have some passing musical knowledge and I'm curious about the composition. I uh, certainly, I, I can't see why that would be a problem. If you'd like to speak with him, tell him to, uh, uh, tell him to hurry up. <laughs> We're running out of time. If he's <laughs> finished, uh, bring me that script. Um, yeah, I'll give you his address. And Thank you. Give you, uh, give you the address uh, to Ridley's apartment. Uh, which is uh, not too far from here. It's just in a different part of Soho. I'm assuming based on what you just said, you haven't heard from him in a, in a short while. No, no, no. I believe he's uh, head down in his work. He's, uh, you know, chained to the desk. When I do see. you expect all the work to be done? You have a deadline? I, I certainly hope he'll reach it. I mean, the performance, of course. And ideally, the dress rehearsal beforehand so we can... Test the music on a, on a, on a hope. A... Yes. When did you say that was? Tomorrow evening. Boy, that is soon. Coming up. Coming up. But, you know, if it's not ready, well, the show must go on. Uh, things will be all right. And this was all your idea then, was it? It's your piece. You started it. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm writing it myself. But, of course, the, the inspiration, you know, where can we say where ideas truly come from, Professor? Where indeed. Loki's gift. Something yes. about Norse mythology, no doubt. Well, I think that the, the concept, the character that Loki represents is more of a, 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 a human idea of uh, jokes and uh, the ultimate irrelevance of us in the face of larger, more powerful things. I really don't think you can put an academic stance on creativity, Professor. It's something that comes to one through the nature of being human, you see. Well, I wouldn't know much about that. Uh, the the uh, something about just kind <laughs> what? of smiling. What? What? Flick his eyes between the two of you. Right. Well, uh, thank you for your time, uh, Mr. Chillingworth. It was delightful to make your acquaintance. Uh, I do very much hope we can make it to the dress rehearsal. I would love to see the piece in its. Uh, developmental stages it's the most exciting time as you say um uh, just one more question will we see you around the pacific club if we were to duck down there sometime um uh you're you a make a psychology check professor you're a patron when i say the words pacific club <laughs> <laughs> does that mean anything this is the only thing you have said that cracks his sort of affable veneer uh -huh. just a little bit and he leans back ever so slightly, and you get a sense of slight tension there. And he says, ah, oh, yes, I am a member of the club, but I have not been in quite some time. Uh, you won't see me there. Is that true? Do I get the sense that that's... That, yeah, you get the sense the that, I mean, obviously there is more to that, but the, you, you believe that is to be the case, yes. So there's a history there. There is a history there, but it is true that he has not been there in quite some time. That is very interesting. Hmm. Any mm. other questions? There are no others. In with that case, uh, Chillingworth will 
call for Ruth, who pops back into the room. She's apparently been hanging about quite nearby, and she will encourage uh, she, she, he will encourage uh, you to follow her out, and she, she will escort you uh, uh, away. And uh, I will see you hopefully at the uh, dress rehearsal soon. Yes, thank you, thank you, Chillingworth. A wonderful establishment again. Appreciate your time. Thank you. And uh, the three of you will turn and leave and begin to head down the stairs. Pass by all the individual doors, still filled with people, still all bustling around until you get back down. Oh, sorry. I do. We, we did have something else we needed to do here, which I just remembered. Ah, just at the door. So just before you step the out. The statue. Mm. Yeah, but I think the professor suggests that we don't give it over yet. We're going to hold oh, on. Oh, very it. good, very good. Uh, I probably will go, oh, one more thing. And then I assume the professor realizes what's happening and like just stares daggers. <laughs> That's staring daggers. Uh, if you're ever looking for a um, collaborator on, uh, on any work, I am rather fond of uh, making sure that things of this nature go ahead and the artists involved are paid for their time. Mm. Well, very good. I will uh, I'll come and speak to you if I can think of something. And he'll be able to proffer a card, he'll take it. Otherwise, down the stairs, back out towards the door. Um, and I'm- I want to talk to Ruth quickly, just on the way down. Yep. If I notice that she's, does she still have the sort of the scared shitless expression yeah she does um she, she and you you when you look at her now you can see she's kind of like almost trying to say something she keeps like pulling herself back at the last minute as we get to one of the stairs or as we're going I'll, I'll just walk alongside her and say um are you feeling all right you look a little um peaky um uh she kind of glances towards uh you and then back and she she draws back a little bit until your companions are just ahead although you two might be able to hear if you're if you think your characters will be keeping an, an ear out for this um and ruth grabs your arm with like digs her nails in like just terrified um and uh she'll whisper to you he's he's crazy he's dangerous he's he, he's he's very dangerous who is the Chillingworth? Chillingworth, yes, Chillingworth. He's what? he's up to. I don't. He's mad. Totally, totally are mad. You, listen, are, are are you in danger here? Are, are you concerned for yourself after what happened to Charles? Um, uh, she turns to you and and nods and says, "We're all in danger. I I don't know what he's doing, but he's got plans at at the rehearsal. I don't know, and, and afterwards." There's an after party here, and I think I think he's going to do something awful. Okay, all right, listen. We're professionals, all right? We, we've dealt with not quite this, but, but similar things. We can help. We're, we're looking into this, and you, you'll be all right. Everyone will be all right. If you want, you can you can come with us now. Uh, the, the Lord here is, is quite well off, if I do say so myself. I'm, I'm sure we could post you up somewhere. But if you don't want to run, we'll, we'll be back soon. Um, you're reaching the bottom of the stairs now, and she kind of looks back and forth, turns towards you, and says, "I, I can't, I can't come with you. He'll, he'll, he'll find me. He can. I, I see him in my dreams." Listen, we're looking into this, and and we'll be back as soon as possible. We'll be at the dress rehearsal, and if there's to be an after party, we'll be there as well. Look for us, and anything else happens, you let us know. Just one last thing: Did did you know Charles? I, I knew him. I knew him. He he had the dreams too. And whatever that music is, it's bad. And it was pushing him. And he he couldn't take the things that he saw. All right. Well, listen. Thank you for everything you said. We'll I'll let the others know, and we'll we'll be back as soon as we can to help. Um, she nods, and you step outside onto the street. And just as before, this little shrunken figure behind now pushes the door closed, and you hear it click shut. Now you can all, all you can hear is the faint music once again, drifting down from the rooms upstairs. As the three of you stand out on the street in Soho, as the evening <clears throat> begins to settle in. Well, that was a rather delightful uh, little jaunt, wasn't it? He's behind it, isn't he? I think he's the puppet he... master pulling the strings. I think he might be. I, I spoke with Ruth as we descended, and she's been having strange dreams. Reckons Charles did as well. Whatever this performance is, uh, I think it's. I think it's something more sinister. There's to be an after party as well after the dress rehearsal tomorrow night. 
seems like whatever's going down might happen then. We need to be ready. Well, I seem like a perfectly reasonable place to me, but all right, if you say so. I've uh, trusted the two of you before, I'll do it again. I reckon he may have made some enemies at the Pacific Club. You think he might be much a as I, Hulkum? Mm, much as I don't like to fit foot in there, may not have a choice. Maybe something there we can use against him. Man, I would, um, again, as lord of stuff and things, uh, is it reasonable that I would have, a, like, a membership to most of the eminent clubs in London? Absolutely. And a very, very notably not to the Pacific Club. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So is it because it is a newer club? Is it because it is a, like, the membership has special requirements? Yeah, very, guess... very, very exclusive. Right. Uh, so not, invitation not, only kind of thing. Exactly. And not not necessarily you just have to be wealthy. It Like, they have other criteria which grants membership and you, you do not appear to have made the list. Right. So sort of like Shoreditch House and that kind of thing. Um, I'm not familiar with Shoreditch House, but... Right. Um, uh, you, you, you can... have to know an existing member to to be able to get a membership. Uh, do you want to make membership. a credit rating check for specifically more information? It's like cool. Costco. You have to pay and you yes. have to have a card and everything and they don't let you in. I don't think Costco has requirements. Like you need to know someone who already has a membership yeah, though, right? It does. You, oh, need does to, it? You, need to, you need to kill yeah. a kid. Yeah, oh, got it. Pretty cool. fucked. Makes sense. Or be the seventh son of the seventh son of a yeah. Costco member. Yeah, it's like it's it's like it's like, being a, it's like being a oh, member of Rooms. It's really really hard. Come on, Costco. Hard success. Which um, I mean, I can make an extreme if I have to. But no, that's not. that's fine. Uh, they are. Um, uh, they appear to have more of a historical lineage, so they're actually a quite old club. Um, uh. They've been around for a while, and and they appear to make selections based not just on um, uh, you know you know wealth and power, but you would you would guess, although you don't know exactly, also on things like you know your your lineage according to which royalty you were related to back in the 14th century and things like that. So it's stuff that you know no matter how how much money you might have, uh, they're very, very specific about who they let in. You know, Can I get in? What, what's, what's my history with the, with the club? Because I've come in my backstory. I know this yes. one guy is up to no good. Do sure. they know about me? Uh, you know what? Um, you, why, don't you, why don't you make a luck check? And basically, <sighs> you, you ha when you come across occultists, a lot of them seem to have ties back to the uh mm. to the uh, pacific club and more specifically to theodore holcomb but um beyond that not really you haven't like, directly worth being coming. a member though because he wasn't like a lord or anything he's just a patron like he's wealthy sure but he's not yes okay yes exactly yeah um, they, as far as you're aware, Jesus Christ! I know that's what, and I didn't see the roll. Jim made that roll for me. He might have made that up. <sighs> Although you will notice that your education is ninety because you did get a plus ten on your improvement check for age. Oh, so shit. you know you can take. I've got eighty. Should I have ninety? Oh, sorry. Yeah, you you. Let's go back and fix that up later. But you you did get plus. No, maybe I put your intelligence highest. Anyway, regardless, anyway. moving one step on. Um, uh, so it's bullshit. Yeah. All right, so uh, have they heard of me? Uh, they have not heard of you, no. All right, so I could get us in with my knowledge of what they're about. You could try, absolutely. Anyway, let's just get it towards. down. It's Actually, towards if, um, yep. if Charles had a membership, that would imply that either, well, if Charles is able to get in, it either implies that he had a membership, in which case his family line is is connected to the right people, or he knew someone who had a membership and was able to take him in as a guest. Exactly. So did we get any information about, like, how he... Because I know Catherine said he was spending time with Cornwall. Was the implication that it was her that got him into the club or have we not got any kind of connection there yet? I mean, Cornwall... You know that Chillingworth was a member and you know that Cornwall said she introduced Charles to Chillingworth. So that would be an immediate uh, connection. Okay. Sure. But so. that, is about, that is about the shape of it. Anyway, 
it's getting towards evening inside inside the game world and if you want to visit the club unless you would like to do a break in rather than try and get in through officious means uh you're going to have to return you're going to have to sleep um but we are also in our world approaching the end of the session so as the collection of you um slowly begin to move away from the uh from the building um scatter you have some leads you have knowledge about a sinister play or dress rehearsal which will be taking place and a potentially even more sinister after party is that smell of opium smoke still lingers uh, in your nostrils maybe you think just for a second you can hear the first notes of some discordant music echoing from inside that apartment that studio before you step away and vanish into the streets here we go again Whoa. and we'll leave the session there Exactly. Oh, I'm I'm sad that this dress rehearsal not opening night because if it was opening night, I'd be able we'd be able to dress up fancy again. <laughs> so that's now a thing on this stream. Oh, you do. can still you can still dress up fancy, but actually no, don't do that. It's a dress rehearsal. It's slumming it. You couldn't possibly. You're <laughs> dead not to. Oh, okay, exactly. break into some shit and start setting fires. Ooh, can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that <laughs> is an option. We could just break into wherever this is happening, set everything on fire, and be like, and we're done. The exactly. old classic tear away <laughs> anyway uh that is that is the first uh that is the first um session of uh, cults of cthulhu cult uh, of cthulhu thank you very much to all of the players for playing and thank you very much to all of the audience for uh listening uh you can get call of cthulhu uh, uh sorry Cult of Cthulhu. You can also get Call of Cthulhu. Get both, you can get yeah. Of, yeah, exactly. You can get Cult of Cthulhu in PDF currently on the Chaosium website, but you can also get the physical edition, which is releasing on the 20th. So just oh. in a few short days, you will be able uh, to pick that cover. up. Simultaneously with uh, Time to Harvest, of course. Exactly. Simultaneously with Time to Harvest. Uh, we will be back next week playing the second session of uh, Loki's Gift, but we will also be around this Monday at 6pm PDT when we are jumping in to play RuneQuest, a new hero that oh is a new stream uh, featuring some great RuneQuest content. So uh, hope to see you there. Thanks once and again. In between for streams, of course, you can you can hang out with us and catch it up and chat fun. chat with all uh, chat all sorts of stream of chaos things in, in the, the Discord. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> Did you get anything and else? The, uh, I think that's everything. The link, the link to join that is, of course, going in the Twitch chat right now and in the YouTube description. <laughs> I'm sure. Probably. Maybe. If it isn't, I don't know. Check it out. How do you do <laughs> it? Hell yeah. How do you invite? I you think invite. it's linked on our actual like stream link. page. You can find it, it is, there. And, there you yeah. go. I just put it in the chat. Hey, so rock good. Rock. A plus. Such a, such a good sword wielder. Clean as Perfect. a whistle. Well, right. thanks again, everybody. And we'll uh, see you next time. Say same.